طيب الله أوقاتكم إسرائيل تجر الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية من أنفها في سياساتها الخارجية لو أن هذا الكلام منك أو مني أو حتى من بعض أصحاب الضمير في أمريكا فلن يلتفت كثير من الناس إليه لكنه حين يأتي من أحد أعتى عقول وكالة الاستخبارات المركزية CIA فلا بد أن تكون لنا أمامه وقفة بل إنه خدم بلاده في مجال الأمن القومي ل 22 سنة تكللت عام 96 برئاسته ما عرف داخل الوكالة باسم محطة ألك وهو اسم حركي لوحدة كرست جهودها لملاحقة زعيم القاعدة أسامة بن لادن ضيفنا في هذه الحلقة وطني أمريكي يضع مصالح بلاده فوق كل شيء ويتحلى بأخلاق الفروسية يرى في بن لادن زعيما تاريخيا وعدوا يستحق الاحترام دون أن يمنعه ذلك من السعي وراء رأسه يتمتع بدرجة فائقة من المهنية ويخفق في صدره ضمير حي كان لابد معه من أن يدفع الثمن هو الذي أشار إليه بن لادن نفسه حين قال للأمريكيين إن أردتم أن تعرفوا لماذا نحاربكم فاقرأوا كتاب ذلك الرجل وهو منكم من سوى عملاق مثله يصلح اليوم أن يتحدث إلينا عن الحادي عشر من سبتمبر وعن آثار الحادي عشر من سبتمبر أعزائي المشاهدين دعونا نعطل مشاعرنا إلى حين ونرحب بضيفنا عبر الأقمار الصناعية من واشنطن ولأول مرة على قناة مصرية مايكل شوير مايكل Good evening and thank you so much for being with us tonight. Good evening, Yoshi. Thank you very much for having me. Now, uh, we're nine years on the attacks uh, of 9-11-2001. Uh, uh, Where do you think we are now? I can't help but think, Yoshi, that uh, certainly the Osama bin Laden and the forces that he leads and inspires have to be very much pleased with the progress they've made. America is losing two wars. It's deeply in debt. And our military and intelligence forces are spread very thin. We're really exactly uh, suffering from the ills that bin Laden intended to uh, inflict on us. But at the same time, uh, other voices, especially in the United States of America and in the West generally, would say the opposite, that Al-Qaeda is very much disrupted, very much on the run. Bin Laden, we haven't even heard from him for so long. Well, Yossi, we heard from him twice earlier this year, and we hear from his lieutenants, junior and senior, with, with great regularity. And I'm afraid Mr. Obama, before him, Mr. Bush, uh, most of the leaders of Western Europe, they, sp they speak what they want to believe, not what actually is happening out there. Overall, you know, nine years after 9-11, the, the, the movement that bin Laden inspires and represents is, is much greater, much larger than it was on 9-11. Uh, Mike, um, you have a very a long and outstanding uh, track with the national security uh, in the United States of America, 22 years, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And in the year 1996, uh, there was uh, an idea which turned into a reality uh, to start to set up uh, a unit. Uh, whose mission is only to focus on one man, one single man. Uh, his name is Osama bin Laden. And you were the first to head this unit, which was incidentally named after your very son, uh, Alec. And it was called Alec Station. Tell us a little bit, a little, a bit about um, uh, the, the circumstances surrounding the establishment of the Alec Station, the bin Laden unit. Well, Yostri, we had run across uh, Mr. Bin Laden when he was in Afghanistan fighting the Soviets. Uh, he would not talk to us at that point. He disliked us then, and of course he had uh, a great deal of his own money. 
But after the Soviets left Afghanistan, we began to come across his name uh, in Yemen, in uh, the Balkans, Eritrea, um, the Philippines, Mindanao. And the government decided to put together a unit to try to find out if he was uh, a genuine threat to the United States or a, a Saudi spendthrift, if you will, someone just throwing money at radical causes. What did you find at the time? Well, we're, we're, we're talking in a very uh, propitious date, uh, Yosri, because uh, 14 years ago tomorrow, our time, 14 years ago today to, for you, bin Laden declared war on the United States in a very lengthy, very pointed uh, declaration of war. And um, I'm afraid very few people outside of the CIA in the United States government uh, took it very seriously. But for the last 14 years, he and his organization and their allies have held very closely to, to that declaration of war. Mm. And I'm of the opinion that 14 years later, Osama bin Laden and his lieutenants probably have to be very pleased uh, with how much progress they have made. Okay, uh, in, in, in the, you wrote a couple of books uh, while still in service. Um, one of them, uh, uh, in particular, which is called Imperial uh, Hubris, uh, you mention, uh, let me quote to be precise, on page 26, that America was willfully unprepared for the New York and Washington attacks. Willfully. That's a very strong word. Well, I intended to, to be very strong, Yosri. I wrote that book to, to try to tell Americans how badly they had been served by their government. Uh, before 9-11, uh, the CIA, for all the criticism of it, had delivered to uh, President Clinton 12 different opportunities to either kidnap or capture Osama bin Laden or to use the US military to kill him. And on every occasion, Mr. Clinton and his lieutenants uh, uh, decided not to do it. 9-11 uh, is a very preventable incident. And uh, uh, the truth of the matter was that the federal government in the United States uh, failed to protect Americans. Let us um, talk. I know that you're probably sick and tired of talking about missed opportunities, the so-called missed opportunities. But you mentioned a few of them. You believe that there were um, about eight to ten golden uh, opportunities during which uh, you could have dealt with Bin Laden. Uh, you could have either captured him or killed him. Uh, what sticks in the mind from those um, uh, attempts, uh, eight to nine opportunities? Well, let me say first, Yostri, that no one has to take my word for that. All of those opportunities uh, were documented in the 9-11 Commission report here in the United States after the attacks on Manhattan. Perhaps the one that sticks in my mind the most is in the third week of May 1993, 1999. Rather. We knew where bin Laden was sleeping uh, in the Kandahar area every night for five consecutive nights. And on each of those occasions, uh, the president and his advisors decided not to kill Osama bin Laden uh, with U.S. military forces. That probably is the, the point where I decided that I could no longer um, uh, be responsible for, for the continued failure of the United States to protect its citizens. Uh, I know that uh, there isn't much love lost between you and one man in particular. His name is Richard Clark, uh, the White House man for counterterrorism, uh, the president's advisor for national security at the time. He served under President Clinton uh, as well as uh, he, uh, President George W. Bush for a few years at least. Um, you still believe that uh, he could have done better? I think Mr. Clark and most national security officials in the United States at the highest level, Yostri, 
are more concerned with protecting the president's uh, political interests than in protecting Americans. They're more interested in getting him elected and therefore trying not to embarrass him overseas if, if he makes a mistake. Uh, Mr. Clark, it, it, you know, he has his own conscience to live with, uh, and that should be plenty. Whether I like him or not is really beside the point. Um, to be fair, uh, also to his credit, he, uh, he also wrote a book called Against All Enemies. Uh, and he mentions uh, one uh, incident in particular uh, which took place uh, the day after the attacks on the 12th of September 2001 when uh, eventually uh, President George W. Bush uh, arrived back at the White House and a meeting was held during which it was decided that Al-Qaeda was behind the attacks and against uh, or to his surprise as he mentioned in the book and I'm sure that uh, this paragraph must have caught your attention that the president was very adamant and very persistent that Mr. Clark goes over and over again in search for a Saddam angle to the attacks on 9-11? Well, yeah, yes, that's absolutely the case. They wanted, a, they wanted to tie a rock to it because Mr. O Bush's advisors, who are very, were very pro-Israeli, as are Mr. Obama's, wanted to take care of the Saddam problem on behalf of the Israelis. And so 9-11 really gave them an opportunity to try to tie the two programs together, the two problems together, rather, Osama bin Laden and Saddam, and to be able to justify a war, uh, an invasion of Iraq. Uh, that's, that's very clear. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Well, did uh, the Iraq thing need a 9-11? Uh, it made it easier, I think, Yosri. I, I don't know how well your audience knows the, the American people, but after 9-11, President Bush could have done virtually anything he wanted to militarily uh, against Osama bin Laden and anyone connected with him, and the American people would have supported it. And the lie that Saddam was connected to 9-11 to certainly helped push through the idea that there ought to be a U.S. invasion of Iraq. It, it was all a lie, of course, but it was very effective, and the media here went along with it. But, you know, the argument also on the other side is that um, the world is a much better place now without Saddam. Well, it's certainly not a much better place for uh, the United States without Saddam. 